Throughout the Second World War, there were a number of high-ranking military officials who were executed for their involvement in war crimes. But there were a number of politicians who were hated for their involvement in the governments of those dictators who were responsible for much brutality and evil. At the end of World War II, there were many people inside of Nazi Germany who even turned against Adolf Hitler their Führer. Even Hitler's closest friends such as Magda Goebbels, the wife of Joseph Goebbels, and a woman believed to be Hitler's best friend, would complain about the dictator and how he was leading Germany towards defeat at the hands of the Allies and the Red Army. Inside of Italy there was complete capitulation, as the former fascist dictator Benito Mussolini was executed at the side of a road near to Lake Como, and the man who had been in power for decades with his fascist black shirts propping him up, was ousted brutally from power by his own government. Mussolini even had to be saved from captivity by Hitler during the war, but ultimately his enemies caught up with him. But one man who was also a good friend of Mussolini, who was brutally executed, was Guido Buffarini Guidi. He was a man who was known to have committed a number of war crimes, but strapped to a chair in front of a crowd, Guidi was executed, shot by a firing squad. But what is the story of his execution, and what did he do which was considered necessary to take him to the firing range? Join us today as we look at this, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Guido Buffarini Guidi was born on the 17th of August 1895 in Pisa in Italy. It's assumed that he had a normal early life, however the First World War would change this. As Italy entered the conflict, Guidi volunteered himself to serve in the armed forces, and he then became part of an artillery regiment, who would man artillery guns on the battlefield, firing shells towards the enemy. But throughout the conflict he excelled in his service, and he was promoted in 1917 to the rank of a captain, and as the Italians were fighting in many different battles, he saw action. But he must have enjoyed his time inside the Italian military, as he stayed on active duty in the army for many years after World War I had finished. He also, whilst this was happening, attended the University of Pisa, and he obtained a degree in law, which he hoped to one day use in a career change. He left the army with a significant rank of lieutenant colonel, but at the time there was a huge shift in Italy with regards to politics. The National Fascist Party was created by Benito Mussolini, being founded in November 1921. The party then established a base of power being propped up by the Black Shirts, a paramilitary fascist group which were incredibly strong. But on the 28th of October 1922, Mussolini attempted a coup inside of Italy which was known as a march on Rome. Around 30,000 fascists took part, with Mussolini actually staying behind for much of the march, but he was photographed marching with the black shirts. But two days later, Mussolini stated in front of 60,000 people at the Fascist Congress in Naples that, Our programme is simple, we want to rule Italy. The black shirts were beginning to occupy different parts of the country too, and it was clear that Mussolini would brutally want to wrestle power from the regency and the government. The king at the time, Victor Emmanuel III, was worried that there would be a civil war breaking out, and Mussolini was then asked to form a cabinet, and he would take power inside Italy. An agreement was struck between he and the king, that made Mussolini the head of the Italian government, and when they took sole power, the regime began imposing its fascist ideology onto the country. Mussolini became known as Il Duce, and was seen as the nation's saviour, in a way that many people in Germany would later view Adolf Hitler. But with his rise, there were many other Italian fascists, who would also come to prominence. Guido Buffarini Guidi was one of those, and he became active in many fascist groups following leaving the army, and eventually then joined the party. He was seen as a good man who Mussolini could trust, and also a man very experienced in military matters, something that the dictator would value as he continued to build his power. Guidi was then established as the mayor of Pisa, his hometown, in April 1923, shortly after the seizure of power, and then in 1924 he was at the top of the local party hierarchy, being responsible for fascist control and activity in his area. As time went on he became a consul, or chief magistrate, or official of the black shirts, commanding the different activities they were involved in. But then he transitioned over time into roles in government within Mussolini's regime, and in May 1933 Guidi was appointed to become the Undersecretary Minister of the Interior, basically an assistant to the Interior Minister, but he also struck up a close friendship with Galeazzo Sciano, the son-in-law of Mussolini who married the dictator's daughter. Sciano would later become the foreign minister, but the pair had a close friendship and political alliance, and they would oppose a number of policies. 
The pair also made some secret services who would operate, and they also tried to reduce the anti-Semitic policies that were being passed by the fascists. Together they did manage to undermine Mussolini and his government a number of times, and they would continue in their roles inside of his regime for a number of years. Even as the Second World War broke out, Guidi was seen as a key part of Mussolini's government, but he and Sciano would disagree on something very significant in July 1943. Mussolini's power inside the country as the war was going terribly was waning, and by 1943 the position of the Italian military was untenable. The Axis forces in North Africa were defeated, and the Italians had a huge number of problems on the Eastern Front. But then the Allies would invade Sicily, bringing the war to the doorsteps of the Italians, and the home front was in a mess, as the Allies were bombing heavily. Mussolini knew the Allies would attack Italy, and the Allies would bomb Rome, the first time that the historic city had ever been under such a severe bombing attack. With this situation, many members of the government then turned against Mussolini, and he was forced to summon the Grand Council, and with this there was a vote in protest against him. A no-confidence vote in Mussolini was tabled, and the result was 19 members saying they had no confidence, but 8 still backed him. Ciano turned against his father-in-law, but Guido Guidi continued to remain behind Mussolini. He voted in favour of him, and because of this loyalty, Mussolini was grateful. But Mussolini now had little power, and he was then held captive and was arrested. He was sacked by the king, and once he left the palace he was arrested by the Carabinieri. The police took him in a Red Cross ambulance car, and they said they were doing this for his safety, and people across Italy were happy with Mussolini's downfall, and they believed it meant the end of the war. Mussolini would be moved around different places, as the government knew there would be an attempt by the Germans to rescue him from captivity, as his loyalty and friendship with Hitler would see the Nazi dictator try and free him. He was then held inside a Hotel Campo in Patore, but then, on the 12th of September 1943, the rescue raid would take place with the Grand Sasso raid, in which German paratroopers managed to free Mussolini. It stopped him being turned over to the Allies, and Hitler even drew up plans to arrest the King and Crown Prince, but Mussolini was then smuggled to Nazi Germany, where he met with Hitler and was given control of the Italian Social Republic, a Nazi puppet state in the north of the country. Because of his loyalty to Mussolini, Guido Buffarini Guidi was rewarded with a position as the First Minister of the Interior of the Italian Social Republic. He was a man who, in most of his time in government, had spent time in the shadows, but he was now one of the most senior members of the new Italian Social Republic, but inside of this disjointed new government, many could not trust him. His colleagues viewed him as power-mad and greedy, and with this they could not trust him at all. But the Italian Social Republic was short-lived, in February 1945, with the war now heavily against the Axis and the German forces, Guidi was sacked by Mussolini from his job, and he then sought to save his skin. He must have been concerned that his links to the fascist regime, which was linked to Hitler and the Nazis, was going to be punished at the end of the war, and for this he began to consider fleeing, and he tried to escape to Switzerland. But on the 26th of April 1945, he was arrested by groups of partisans who hated the fascists. He was then imprisoned for a number of weeks before Guidi was then brought to trial for his crimes. He was taken to an extraordinary court of justice hearing in Milan, and he was then accused of war crimes, and for this was found guilty. He was then sentenced to death for being in collaboration with Mussolini, and was to be executed by a firing squad. He did try to take his own life whilst he was held in captivity, and he tried to barter with authorities, saying he had letters exchanged between Mussolini and Churchill which were compromising, but he would not be released, and on the 10th of July 1945 at the age of 50, Guido Guidi was executed in Milan. Guido Buffarini Guidi was taken out in front of a crowd and he looked a mess. His shirt had been ripped as he went to his death, and he was led out by two men who gripped him arm in arm. He was then secured to a chair and was tied by a number of ropes that bound him to the wooden piece of furniture before the firing squad were told to ready. These men had been assembled to take his life, and Guidi was to be shot in the back facing away from his executioners, which for a military man was considered very shameful. The firing squad were then ordered to shoot, and immediately Guido Buffarini Guidi was executed, and he was left slumped over his chair. He was a man who rose from the military into politics, and he then became a loyal ally and friend of Benito Mussolini. But his loyalty would stand the test of time, and he was ultimately executed for this, and he was seen as an important fascist politician. 
but strapped to a chair, whilst there were a number of partisan soldiers opposite him, armed with their rifles. He was executed, and he would just be one of a number of prominent fascists who were executed in the days after the war, and following the downfall of Mussolini. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.